So in a previous review, we established how much I really do like the Yotsuba Rebel Tech, as well as the Danbo Rebel Tech, which is a bit simpler, sure, but they're still great figures. I called them wonderful representations of the characters, and I was rather satisfied with them. I mean, Yotsuba is one of the cutest anime characters I can recall, so why not make an even cuter figure of her? And you know what? For good measure, make a cuter version of Danbo as well. Well, the figure gods are smiling at us today because I am bringing you Nendoroid 1064 and 1065, Yotsuba and Donboard. Now, as you may have guessed, these are the 1064th and 1065th Nendoroid figures in the series. That is impressive. And I'm very happy to see them come so late because that means they got the proper polish and the great treatment they deserved as legendary characters from the anime world. I will always praise Good Smile for the ability to condense their packaging as small as they have with the Nendoroid line. Some of the older Nendoroid boxes are as big as both of these combined. Even a relatively small one like this is still about a figure and a half as far as the box goes. Hilariously enough, the Umaru face swap is one of the closest as far as sizing goes on packaging, but that's no comparison because these are literally just parts. Still, the boxes look great. We have the white and green theme here for Yotsuba with the dashes of yellow in there, as well as the cardboard looking aesthetic to the Donbo box, which is super cute. Turning the boxes to the side will allow us to see both figures in a couple poses. We have a crying Yotsuba, as well as a rather inquisitive Yotsuba, a sitting Donbo, as well as an ominous eyes lit up Donbo as well. Yotsuba is ready to paint and Donbo is happily walking. On the top of the box, we even have more poses here looking rather adorable. They both appear to be jumping up with their arms out, so that's a nice little theme there. They're both rather happy. Even the bottom of these boxes have more poses. We have an angry Yotsuba and a sitting Donbo. Finally, the back of the box shows both of them in additional poses. So this is a great way to market the figure. And honestly, these look awesome. If I picked one of these up off of a shelf, I would be hard pressed to not take it to the counter and purchase the thing. Good Smile just gets Good packaging, attractive packaging, and these are no different. They're lovely. Let's open them. Ooh, we're gonna get a two for one today. And how cute is this? When you open the box, you get to see the yellow exclamation and this little teddy bear on the flaps. And of course, inside this box, we have the iconic Donbo face as well as the exclamation point one last time. Hilariously enough, Yotsuba is the one that actually comes with everything. Donbo doesn't come with anything but the figure, which is kind of upsetting me because I thought they would at least include something with him. Though Yotsuba here has everything you see depicted here, as well as on the back, there's even more accessories. So she's the one to buy of the two. I should mention that he does come with a stand, so there's that much. And wow, that's it. That's all you get. And to be honest, I'm kind of disappointed. It's incredibly lightweight. The thing does not feel very high quality at all. I thought that his head would at least be solid, but it's not. And I'm not sure if this is just me, but this thing has a really loose neck joint right out of the box. Now there was an extra joint here in with the stand, so I suppose I could swap it if it's too loose, but that's pretty bad out of box. But it's about what you would expect from an Enderoid. It has decent enough articulation, head can go up and down, it can swivel, and of course, there's plenty of rotation there. The arms can also go in and out. They don't have a swivel, but they do swivel where they connect. But I suppose that makes sense since he's just a bunch of blocks. Now the head has pretty good articulation. You can make it go up and down, side to side swivel, and it rotates pretty well. You won't have any trouble there. His arm, of course, is just segmented right there, so you can only get an in and out, as well as swivel it where it connects to the body. Unfortunately, the flaps are not posable. I thought that they would be hinged, but they're just kind of stuck static in that position, which is a little bit of a letdown. Finally, the legs do have minimal articulation. They can go in and out, which is surprising due to how small they are. Uh, and they do actually have a swivel, strangely enough. Donbo here has a little switch on the side, which is pretty similar to the Rebel Tech, though it doesn't come with any batteries. Now, annoyingly enough, this is not your typical battery. If you look inside this little flap, you'll see that that's a tiny little battery. I have no idea what kind of battery this is. I thought it was something like this, but this is actually too small. This was already in the Donbo Rebel Tech, so I already had that, but this doesn't come with a battery, which kind of upsets me because I can't show you what it looks like lit up. Hilariously enough, if you look in the instructions, it shows that it actually takes two batteries. They're listed as LR41 batteries, which I don't even know what those are. 
So check it out, I actually went ahead and bought the batteries. They actually go in this little door right here and they're a little expensive if you buy them at like a drugstore, but you can get them online cheap enough and it just simply, with this little switch, you can light up his eyes, which I guess is cool. I don't know if it's really worth the extra money, but I guess it's a feature that I didn't want to ignore, so I actually wound up delaying the review so that I could go get the extra batteries. Now, it seems these batteries aren't too expensive. You can get a 20 pack for like five bucks on Amazon, but still, it's kind of annoying me that they didn't come with the figure. I mean, for $30, you're really not getting anything of value here. I could see spending 20 on this thing, but with no accessories, there's no way they can try to get away with 30 and then not give you the batteries to light him up. I'm honestly a little bit mad here. So there you go, there's Donbo. You know, this Rebel Tech is actually a heck of a better deal because this thing actually has some texture to it. There's a bit of shading all over the boxes, which looks good. It actually looks like it's made out of boxes. And additionally, this thing at least came with the batteries to light its eyes up. As much as I dislike Rebel Techs, this one does it right. And funny enough, these little flaps are actually movable. Wow, imagine that. But let's move on to Yotsuba because if not, I'm just gonna be mad all night. Okay, so I'm already happier with this because man, there's a lot to unpack. So this is a double-decker display here. There's so much that they had to pack it in two different plates. So the first one, of course, has three faces, a little clear stand, which I assume is for her bear, and of course the stand for her and an extra joint. Now in the top portion, we have another face, another leg, a pair of sitting pants so that you can sit her down, two additional arms, an arm holding a paint bucket, the teddy bear, the handbag, as well as a paintbrush and the figure with another faceplate, which gives her five faceplates altogether. That is a ton of stuff. But let's get all this out of the way so that we can just take her out and check her out. Now this is that quality that I was raving about. This is what I expect from an Enderoid. This is what I expect from Good Smile Company. This is beautiful. And when you hold these in hand, you can see why I meant this one was so light and so cheap feeling. This one has so much more heft to it. And it's not even that it's heavy, it just feels solid. There's just an essence of quality that you don't get with this hollow figure that I have sitting on the desk. And even the painting on this is better. You can actually see that there's some shading here and there's even some blush on her cheeks and those eyes are absolutely wonderful. We have that shading in there as well as a bit of highlight at the bottom and even that highlight up at the top, which is a reflection. And yeah, this is just exactly what I wanted from this. This looks and feels great. And of course, this one has good posability as well. Her arms are on peg joints, so they can only really swivel just a bit. You can get them to do what you need to, and then you can usually swivel the actual joint coming out of the sleeve. Her head, of course, gets an up and down, and a swivel as well, so you can roll that however you need to. Her pigtails, of course, even have little ball joints, which allow you to pose them even just the slightest, which I appreciate. Her waist actually is pivotable. You can turn it just a bit, not a ton because of the shape, but it is appreciated that it's there. And then of course we have two joints in here, the little ball peg joints, which allow her to kick in and out. And that can also be swiveled as well. And there we have them both. I already swapped one of her face plates just because it was readily available and it was just so adorable. And I'm happy to see them side by side. Of course, Donbo is a bit of a disappointment, but let's just pose these a little bit and get this thing brought home. Now, Yotsuba has a lot of accessories, and the figure overall is, I think, a great representation of the character. Of course, Yotsuba is a kid, so you want her to look small, and the Nendoroid is a perfect form factor to make her look representative of the fact that she is a young child. When I look at the Rebel Tech, it looks good, but next to the Nendoroid, something seems wrong about it. She seems a little too lanky when I'm thinking about things and actually comparing the two, so I think that the Nendoroid actually does get a little bit more love here because I think it is more naturally representative of the character. Donbo, however, I feel like there's no excuse. I don't dislike the figure, but I'm kind kind of disappointed with it for 30 bucks. Now that is on the lower end in regards to an Enderoid. The Yotsuba is actually around $45 if you buy her from a reputable dealer. So I understand. Now she does come with a ton more, so I can say that that price is actually justified. Posability on these figures is what you would come to expect. I actually kind of like the posability on Donbo's arms a little bit more than I like the typical peg joints that you get with something like the Yotsuba figure. His arms are a little bit more attached, so you don't have to worry about them falling off. But that of course means he has no additional accessories for his hands. But that's fine because this figure is a bunch of cardboard boxes. I understand them not being able to do much more with a figure who is literally a bunch of cardboard, but I just want a little bit more. Maybe some texture on some of the edges of the cardboard would make it stick out a little bit more, but of course with these smaller designs, they want to keep everything simple, so I can't really fault it too much. 
They both look great, and together they look even better, so I would say if you're going to get one, you should probably get the other. Yotsuba's accessories are where she really shines. There's so much that you can do with her, from a sitting pose to that one bent leg that allows her to dash off, this figure will leave you with no shortage of posability. I do rather like it, and the only thing that I could say is I would prefer to have maybe another hand option for the arms because they are attached to the arms, so the fact that she has no bald fist is kind of a pain, but whatever. The five faces she comes with are all incredibly expressive, and I do love them, mainly because Yotsuba is an incredibly expressive character. This is what makes her shine so much in the manga. She's always making cute faces, and they're so expressive of this young kid who's full of energy. Rating these is a little strange, only because Donbo is such a low price point that I really can't be too mad that he doesn't come with a ton of stuff. Obviously enough, Yotsuba is where this set shines, and that's because, well, you're not going to put figures for Yotsuba in with Donbo and force people to buy one so that they get the accessories for the other. That would just be kind of cheap. It would falsely add more value to Donbo, which I don't think is fair. I think on his own, if you are just a fan of the design, of which so many people are, Donbo is on everything. If you go to the Kotobukiya store, there's tons of Donbo merch, so if if you want him on his own, that's perfectly fine, and I would give him a 7 out of 10. Meanwhile, I will give Yotsuba a glowing 9 out of 10. This is a really great Nendoroid. The overall presentation here is great. I'm being a little too harsh on Donbo, only because I feel like I have to because I'm so attached to these characters that I wanted more, but I suppose I should have known in advance that there's really only so much you can do with a character like him. How do you guys feel about these figures? Do you think they're good or what? I love Yotsuba, so I'm going to keep these figures, and I'll display them just as I would some of the others I have. They're a low enough investment to keep them around, because, well, that's what collecting's all about. Sometimes you take a gamble, and it might pay off. Make sure to like the video if you did indeed like this, and make sure to subscribe because I'm reviewing figures every week, and I'll be getting plenty more soon. If you want to check out another video, I'm going to link something on screen, and if you do click that, it helps me out regardless of whether or not you've already seen it. Just give it a click, and it helps. Until next time, like Yotsuba, enjoy everything. Have an amazing weekend, and keep on collecting.